ever heard of a South Texas Grand Slam, you know what it consists of? A feral hog, a javelina, a white-tailed doe, and a white-tailed buck. Hi everybody, I'm Keith Warren and welcome to Hunting and Outdoor Adventures. On today's show, we're going to take a Grand Slam and we're going to try to do it with a black powder rifle. So stick around. This week we're in South Texas, and I'm going to try to do something a little unusual. I'll be trying to take a South Texas Grand Slam, and doing it all with a black powder rifle. I'll be using a CVA 50 caliber Apollo. My effective range is approximately 125 yards. On my Alaska hunt, I successfully used this same rifle at 128 yards. It's 128 yards, Keith. so I felt pretty comfortable using it here in South Texas. I'll be hunting on a ranch with a good friend of mine, Red Wood. Red cares a great deal about this ranch and oversees the property with strict wildlife management. We try to keep our deer herd here on a, on a pretty balanced deal. We like about 125 to 130 does to a hundred bucks. So that's called a ratio of one to one point two and a half to one three. We try to keep our deer herd here at about one deer to 50 acres. The first afternoon, Red placed me in an area where I'd seen a giant buck the year before. All right, let me explain to you what we're doing. First off, this is the third year in a row that I've hunted this particular ranch. I've seen a lot of bucks each time I've hunted here in this general vicinity. I've done some scouting, I've seen some rubs, some tracks out here, and we've got real good conditions, okay? And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try to take the biggest buck I've ever taken in my life with a black powder gun, and I have it sighted in for about 100 yards. And with this range finder, I can look and I'm, I'm going to prejudge the distances. I know it's about 85 yards to the very back of this clearing. And over on this side, it's 28. Okay, so I know that I'm on anywhere he comes out. If a buck comes out here, I've got a good chance of getting him. And what we're going to do, we're just going to get camoed up here. We're going to sit real still and we're going to wait till dark and just see if one happens to come by.
we return, we'll begin our South Texas Grand Slam. In order to do the Grand Slam, it meant I should take a javelina whenever I saw one. And that morning, I had one come within easy range. I turn sideways. Okay, here we go. Actually, what this is, is called a javelina hog, for those of you who don't know what one is. And they're, they're rodents, really. And what it is, see, I hit him right here in the shoulder. Perfect shot. I'm shooting a 50 caliber muzzle loader. This is an inline black powder gun. But actually, these are little rodents. And they are, a lot of people think they're real bad to eat. But I'll tell you what, if you know somebody knows how to cook them, they're excellent to eat. They have neat little teeth on them. And you can take them, they make great mounts. Also, the skull makes a real super skull mount because of all the teeth in them. But the neat thing about them is, I know a guy that makes heavily in tamales and we're gonna have a mess up made for Christmas. So this is great. We're gonna go ahead and see if we can get that dough taken care of now. I'm gonna try to get a Texas Grand Slam with a black powder rifle. <laughs> that afternoon, I decided to try for a dough as Red had asked me to. The need to shoot doughs is very critical and some people say oh no don't shoot any does well it might be some years you don't need to but most years you do and it's just like a rancher that's got a hundred head or two hundred head of cows and that's all his ranch will carry if his calf herd comes in or a calf crop comes in at a hundred or two hundred whichever the case may be for cows and uh, if he don't get rid of those cows or the calves won, then first thing you know, he's got doubled what he did have. Same way with a deer herd. You cannot let it get out of hand. So every year we take whatever does. Last year I think we took 50. If the herd gets completely overpopulated, you're going to lose a lot of habitat that won't come back very quickly. They'll eat this brush down until it's just almost nothing then there's going to be a mass die-off and nobody likes to see starving animals. So they have to be harvested. They're no different than a peach crop or a calf crop. You've got to harvest what you raise. We really need everybody to kill a doe. Stay with us when we return. I'll continue working on the Grand Slam. After taking a javelina earlier that morning from a tree stand, I got camoed out and set up at ground level to take my doe. Well, there's a lot of tracks and the wind seems to be right. The sun's right. We'll sit right here by this little bush and see if we can catch one coming across this flat. It's just a matter of being patient, a little bit lucky. Break some limbs off so I can get a good shot. There we go. Let's give it about an hour and see what happens.
Oh yeah, you can see your tracks coming through here, but there's not a whole lot of blood. Matter of fact, I haven't picked up blood. Look at these tracks right here. She's got this is softer ground, and here's some blood. Look at this. Yep, fresh blood right there. There she is, right there. Yes, sir. She piled up. Looky here. Oh boy, I'm well on my way now. Look at there. Look how big that doe's head is. This is a great one to take. This is an old mature doe. She had a fall with her, but doesn't make any difference because by the time fall time comes around, these fawns are all weaned and they're just fine. They'll make it without mama just fine. But this is an old doe. She's got a big head, big body. It's a real good one to take. Once again, with an inline 50 caliber Apollo. The feral hogs would flat take this country if you don't keep them under control. We trap a lot, but we encourage our hunters to shoot hogs because they destroy wildlife birds' nests and uh, the habitat also, but we, I'd hate to see all the feral hogs go. It's interesting, to, and they're good eating, but uh, they do have to be kept under control. Afternoon soon turned into night. And after dinner, I had my chance to harvest a hog behind the ranch house. I think that smoked him. What do you think? Boy, did you hear that thump? Whop. All right, so far today, we started out this morning, and I'm doing all this with a black powder rifle, an inline modern black powder rifle made by CVA. It's a 50 caliber. So far, we got a javelina early this morning. Turned out we shot a real nice doe. It was a six and a half year old, 110 pound doe. Mature doe is a great one to take. I'm gonna make jerky out of it. And this right here is a feral hog. Feral hogs are the only animal that I know of in South Texas that is really causing a big problem to farmers and ranchers. These things right here compete big time with the white-tailed deer as far as getting in and eating their feed. And on this particular ranch, obviously, you saw all the white-tail out here feeding, and the feral hogs come in there, and they started eating the feed, and they start running the deer off. So feral hog, in my opinion, is better to eat than venison, and I'm gonna take this booger, and if you've never eaten a feral hog, you need to get your hands on some and try it. I promise you, in my opinion, it's a lot better than venison. Tomorrow, we're gonna to try to get a big buck now. We'll be right back as I go for a buck. The results of proper game management are obvious to any hunter. Over the past several years, I've hunted with red on this ranch and have had the chance to see some beautiful white-tailed deer, including some awesome trophy bucks. It was well below freezing on my last morning of the hunt. 
I chose to get in one of the many elevated tower blinds in order to stay warm. And this time I took along my 270. And boy was I glad I did. He's 150 yards away. Doggone it, that's just too far to try with my black powder. Come on this way, big boy. Come on. I'm gonna grab my 270. I'm not gonna pass this up. Doggone it, come on back. Turn back this way. I'd love to shoot him with the black powder, but he's going the other way. Look, he's got a drop time. He's got a drop time. Look at that. I'll tell you what, if it wasn't for the rangefinder number one, I would have taken a shot that I shouldn't have taken. And number two, I may have just boogered him up. Oh, check this out. Looky here. Look how many points he has. And he's got frost up here on his arm. Look at here, up on the antlers, he's got frost. Look at that. I'll be doggone. I'll tell you what, folks, it's cold out here. But check this out, he has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven on this side, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. A 14 point buck, looky there. Folks, that thing is an extremely old deer. You can tell by his face, okay, his body, he's got a real big body. And the thing I like about it, now, I saw some real nice bucks on this hunt, and I could have taken them with the black powder, and I could have tried to take him, but he was 150 yards with my rangefinder, and that's just a little bit too far to try with a black powder. Now, some people that are a little bit more experienced with a black powder rifle may have taken a chance, but I had my 270 with me, and I wasn't going to let this big boy go away. That's a heck of a good hunt, and it's a heck of a good example of what hunting in South Texas is all about. You get a javelina, a hog, a doe, and a buck, and that's basically your typical package hunt in South Texas. Oh, I'm going to have him put on the wall and I'm going to give the meat to the people at church. Wonderful. What an animal.